and welcome to worship. My name is Phil Woods and I'm the pastor here at Springfield United Methodist Church and it is good to be with you on this Sunday either in person and outside this morning at 10 30 or in your homes as we are going to celebrate we're going to worship we're going to sing we're going to pray together it is good to gather as God's people today. As a special note, we are gathering not just as God's people in our own little bubble of Springfield United Methodist Church, but we are gathering as a global church, feasting at the Lord's table together because it is World Communion Sunday. And so that communion service is a part of our worship service today, both in person and online. Um, it is my hope that members of the church, if you're over at Green Spring or some other place, they will grab extra communion elements to bring them home to you. If you want to stop by the church and pick some up later this week to celebrate with us, please do so. We will have them available for you as well. A few other, a few, a few other announcements in the life of the church and the work of the kingdom is that we are still going to continue to worship outside until the COVID hospitalization rates come back down because we want to keep people safe. But as long as that's happening, I invite you to stay connected to the church via our weekly email, website, Facebook page. We have a lot of new updates that are coming out. Uh, later on this week, we're going to have the Corpus Christi Anglican Church be joining us here in our facility as they strive to worship and serve God. And we're going to find ways to do that alongside one another as best we can and demonstrate to the world what it looks like to cooperate in ministry together. And so those kinds of announcements are in the weekly email and stuff like that. Um, we're starting a new worship series today, and you'll hear more about that in the sermon. And we'll have some other announcements coming up later on in the service as well. All that being said, let's now prepare our hearts and minds to worship God together. Will you please join me in the call to worship? Today we gather around God's table from near and far. Though we differ in language, custom, and tradition, for there is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. We are one, and together we remember our Lord Jesus who gave himself up for us so we could be reconciled to God. Amen. Let's sing together.
Oh. Hello. Hmm. Excuse me. I was just, I was just having this meal. Hmm. Hmm. But I'm having it by myself today. Here, take a look. There's nobody here. But that's okay. Have you ever had a meal by yourself? Maybe you had breakfast in the morning or eaten lunch on your own or even just had some snacks. That's okay. We've had to do a lot of things differently over the past two years. In fact, even just using these little bad boys. We've never done this in almost 2,000 years. The church is taking communion in new ways. We're using technology like these cameras here to keep us connected. And so we get to see each other and talk to each other. Have you ever Zoomed with someone or FaceTime with a family member or something like that? So that's pretty cool. But when it comes to eating and being together when we eat together, it's a little more complicated in a pandemic. But one thing that we remember today on this special Sunday is that when we share this meal, this gift of bread and wine or grape juice, as it were, we remember that we eat this same meal in all kinds of different ways and in all kinds of different places around the world. Because as we eat this meal, we remember that we don't eat it alone. Christ is with us in this meal. And we eat it with our siblings all around the world. There are people in China who are eating this meal. In Russia, in Africa, there are people in Antarctica who are eating this meal in some way. And we share that meal together. And we remember that in Christ and through the Holy Spirit, we stay connected to one another. We stay in love with one another. We hold on to each other and we belong to one another. And so even if you find yourself eating alone or sharing this meal today by yourself, I want you to remember that Christ is with you and that you belong to Christ you belong to me, to this church, and to the community of believers around the world. You are not alone. And we will share this meal together. And we will continue to share it however we can safely until we share it together at Christ's table when Jesus comes back and we feast at his heavenly banquet. And until that day comes, we're going to do everything we can to remember each other at this meal. And to remember that we belong to one another, we care for one another, and are called to pray for and feed one another. Amen. Mm, it's still good. As part of our new worship sermon series, Let's Roll, I have asked different members of the congregation to share a brief time of witness, a testimony with you, the congregation, about the church about how we serve the church, about how we serve God, and how we do ministry as the church and ministry to all the world. Today, I'm happy to invite Granville Jones to share a bit about his ministry with the church and our call to serve God together. Good morning. My name is Granville Jones, and I'm one of the members of the core group which serves as the main decision-making body for Springfield United Methodist Church. Many of you may not know me because I have only been a member since 2017. I am originally from Sierra Leone, which is a relatively small country in West Africa. I was born into a Methodist family, although I went to Catholic schools for both my elementary and secondary education. My parents and grandparents were heavily involved in the church, so serving in the church came to me naturally. As teenagers growing up with my four siblings, our parents gave us a lot of latitude to go out and have a good time on Saturdays, even staying out till the wee hours of Sunday morning. The only requirement, which was non-negotiable, was to be ready to go to church at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. Now, although the schools I attended were Catholic, 
acceptance was not religion based. I had schoolmates that were Anglican, Hindus, Muslims, and many other religions. All of us took part in devotions before heading to class each day. We studied Bible knowledge based on the Christian faith. Perhaps the most embarrassing part of this for some of us that professed to be Christians was when the kids that were non-Christians got better grades in religious knowledge than we did. But I digress. Now, according to the Living Church, the mission of the church is to learn, connect, and reconcile. To learn, connect, and reconcile. Now, learning involves allowing Christ's vision of God's mission to take over our own thinking, which is often limited. In the traditional sense of mission, the focus is often on expanding and adding more members. Now, what is often overlooked is that in the witnessing of the disciples of Christ, these very different, distinct, and faraway places are connected with each other. Churches around the globe get a lot of support from churches mainly in Europe and the United States. Reconciliation is needed today, more than ever, as many issues are dividing our communities and threaten the well-being of the world. As we celebrate World Communion Sunday today, we want to join Christian churches across the world for this celebration of unity among churches across denominations. We have covenanted together to faithfully participate in the ministries of the church through our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, so that in all things God may be glorified. Through partaking of the bread and cup, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Now the first verse of the hymn, One Bread, One Body, reminds us about precisely that. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing, which we bless. And we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. We are one body in this one Lord. Last week at the beginning of our prayer time, we announced that the Reverend Jeff Roberts had gone home to be with Jesus. We're gonna celebrate the life of Jeff and his ministry along with his family and the full community of Springfield this coming Friday, October 8th at 11 a.m. here in the sanctuary. We're gonna bend our COVID rules just a bit for Jeff and his family, we're gonna ask that everyone spreads out, wears masks, there will be a reception that follows that worship service, but we invite you to join us in person at 11 o'clock this Friday. And so we also continue to hold Jeff, Lori, Andy and Ian, the full family and community in prayer today, uh, remembering that we are still one, united not in death, but in the life to come, and that the full communion of saints feasts with us and lives with us in the fullness of Jesus Christ. And so as we gather together in prayer today, I invite you to live into that hope, to share in that joy of resurrection that we will celebrate and remember later this week. Let's pray together. Jesus prayed that we might be one, one in spirit and one in mission in union and communion with each other and with you. So today, God, we confess fumblings and failures in accomplishing unity. As we set aside yet another day to remind ourselves of the task. On this World Communion Sunday, give us eyes to recognize your reflection in the eyes of Christians everywhere. Give us a mind to accept and celebrate our differences Give us a heart big enough to love your children everywhere. We thank you for setting a table with space enough for us all. Amen. Good morning. I'm Jenny Pate. It's September 28th, and I'm recording in Houston, Texas. For the October 3rd service, I'm reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47, the community of believers. 
The believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the community, to their shared meals, and to their prayers. A sense of awe came over everyone. God performed many wonders and signs through the apostles. All the believers were united and shared everything. They would sell pieces of property and possessions and distribute the proceeds to everyone who needed them. Every day they met together in the temple and ate in their homes. They shared food with gladness and simplicity. They praised God and demonstrated God's goodness to everyone. The Lord added daily to the community those who were being saved. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God within us, for the word of God among us, thanks be to God. We just spent the past seven weeks reviewing the beginnings of existence. I say beginnings, plural, because as we saw, there were many resets, restarts, and do-overs. It started out great, oh yes. In the beginning, all was good, very good even. But it did not stay that way. No, we were not able to rest in God's presence for very long. Between the actions of Adam and Eve and the serpent, all of creation fell into a downward spiral of sin, separation, fear, hardship, pain, and even death. The created order was disrupted. We found ourselves disconnected from God, disconnected from creation and disconnected from one another. But it was in this disconnection, in our fear and in our separation that God reordered the entirety of creation. God rewrote the script. And in the midst of our enslavement to sin and death, God spoke new promises of liberation and life. God refused to let us go. God said, yes, things are definitely going to be different. Things that were supposed to be easy will now be hard. Resting and thriving will become toil and surviving. Our solidarity was disrupted. Our lives were shortened. Our language was confused. But God still promised us a wounded victor. God promised us that a person would one day not only overcome sin, but defeat it at its source. And our theological record tells us that although humans broke this world, one day a human will fix it. The wounded victor 
will set things right. And as it just so happens, our text for this morning picks up right after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, following his death and resurrection, Jesus Christ, otherwise known as God incarnate, tangible and manifested love, the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation, that Jesus. Well, he gave some last minute instructions to his disciples before he floated away. Jesus, who is trying to wrap things up, Jesus, the third person of the Trinity who has been on assignment and out of the office for some 30 plus years now, his, his voicemail is full. You can't even begin to imagine how many unread emails he has waiting for him. This Jesus, who is probably eager to get home, ready to return to his rightful place at the right hand of God the Father. Jesus, who is probably anticipating some kind of heavenly fanfare, some other celestial celebratory activities that he may or may not have been eager to participate in. After all, my understanding of heaven is that it's a pretty good time. Jesus, as he is floating away, calls back to his disciples. Hey, <laughs> y'all still got to help people and stuff. <laughs> God's promise had been fulfilled. Sin and death had now been conquered by a wounded victor. And so this is the final reset, the last time that creation will begin again. This is the birth of God's newest created order. This is the culmination of God's plan this is the beginning of the church. My friends, over the next few months, we're going to move from looking at the very beginnings of creation to studying the very beginnings of the church. We're going to look at how following Jesus' departure, the first disciples, both through and with the Holy Spirit, they developed systems for mission and ministry that allowed them to and I quote, help people and stuff. <laughs> We're going to explore how the church was organized and is still being organized to accomplish God's will. And even more specifically, how the church, the living body of Christ for the world, still has a role to play in fulfilling God's promise to restore, redeem, and rescue all of creation. To help us learn, worship, and serve, we're going to use the metaphor of a bus. That's right, a big, beautiful bus with enough room for the entire community of Springfield. A bus that needs to be driven. A bus that needs to be gassed up. A bus with an engine and lots of additional comfort features. A bus with four tires that support us, move us, and help us reach our destination. We, as the church, the living body of Christ for this world, like the early church and the first disciples, we have things to do, people to see and places to go. We are a vehicle for God's grace and mercy. And so today, to kick off our new worship series, we're going to first affirm who this bus is for, and where it's trying to go. And in case that metaphor isn't quite clear enough, we're going to begin this Sunday by looking at the church, who the church is for and what the church is supposed to do. And we get our first glimpse at those answers from Jesus' final instructions to his disciples. From across all of the gospel accounts, we get kind of the following general instructions. Jesus, at some point between his resurrection and his ascension, says to his disciples, number one, tell people about me and the stuff that we did together. Number two, teach them to do the same kind of stuff that we did together. You know, feed, heal them, care for them, advocate for others, that kind of stuff. 
And lastly, Jesus said, baptize them. Bring them into the group. Give them a sense of belonging. Remind them that they are not alone. Jesus says, I, through the Holy Spirit, am still with you. And so, which is the absolute broadest of brushstrokes, those are kind of the basic functions of the church. That's what Jesus told us to do. That's, that's where we're going. It's what we're striving for. That's what we're going to put in our GPS when we get on the bus, when we join the church. Those are the kinds of things that we focus on. And in some fashion, almost every Christian denominational system ties all of its missions or ministries back to one of those three things. We're, we're either talking about Jesus acting like Jesus, or we're creating community around and with Jesus. And when the church is really cruising, you know, when we, when we get up to speed, when the road is clear and the weather is nice, we're doing all of those things together at the same time. And as we see in our text this morning, it has been this way since the very beginnings of the church. Following Pentecost, following the mighty rushing wind, the same wind of creation that swept over the waters of the deep, and following the flames, the tongues of fire that burned with the common language of the Holy Spirit. After all of that had happened, Peter stood up to address the crowd. Peter. Still in the cool hours of the morning, filled with the full power and authority of God, stood up and said, hey, let me tell you about Jesus and some of the cool stuff we did together. And again, we're painting with a very broad brush here, but that's essentially what's happening here in Acts chapter two. I mean, a great many people saw and felt God move through the streets of Jerusalem that day. And so Peter, having their attention, began to proclaim the gospel. And scripture goes on to tell us that the people were so moved by his witness and the revelation of God's fulfilled promises that they were cut to the heart. They were so transformed in this moment that they said to Peter and the other apostles, what do we do? <laughs> if Jesus is real, and if God loves us that much, if the wounded victor has indeed overcome all sin and all death, what do we do next? Where do we go? And so Peter said to them, stop and repent. Don't sin anymore. Stop going that way and go this way instead. Come with us, Peter says. We know a better way. Join us in following Jesus. Come and receive forgiveness. Receive comfort. Be reconciled with God and with one another. God's promise is for every single one of you. It's for you and your children and your children's children. It's, it's for those who are even far away. In fact, it's for anyone that God calls. There is room for everyone on this bus. Don't delay. It costs nothing and you don't even need a ticket. Just come. Scripture says that those who welcomed his message were baptized. And on that day, around 3,000 people were brought into the life of the church, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. This is the good, holy, and necessary ministry of the church. It is the ministry that Jesus tasked us with before he floated back up to heaven. And over the past 2,000 years, that ministry has influenced, impacted, and affected the entirety of human existence. And so today, with two and a half billion of our siblings around the globe, we celebrate and continue this ministry together. With 
literally billions of other people. We invite our communities to gather at a table. We remember who Christ was, what Christ did, and we recommit ourselves to doing likewise. We break bread, we pray, and we invoke the power of the Holy Spirit to unite us in ministry until Jesus returns. And we do so with the hope and expectation that even now, God is with us. My friends, World Communion Sunday offers every congregation the distinctive opportunity to experience Holy Communion in the context of the global community of faith. On this day, and really any time we gather at this table, we are reminded that we are connected not just to this community, to this neighborhood, city, state, or nation, but that we belong to a worldwide movement that affirms Christ as our Lord and Savior. Today, today we are reminded of why all of the recent images of refugees, injustice, oppression, illness, and suffering, we're reminded why they resonate so deep within our hearts, why they cut us to the heart. Because we remember and we understand that we are all connected to one another through Jesus Christ. That we belong to one another as members together in the body of Christ and that we have been tasked with caring for one another. Today, in breaking this bread and drinking from this cup, we remember that we are part of the whole body of believers. And not just the body of believers who are alive today, but the full communion of saints who have celebrated and shared this meal across thousands of years. And whether it is shared here in a sanctuary or in a grand cathedral, whether it's shared in a mud hut, outside in a storefront, or in your own home. We are all united by Jesus Christ and we are all members of his universal and everlasting church. This meal is for everyone. This church is for everyone. There is room for everyone at this table. There is room for everyone on this bus and we've got places to go and ministry to do. So come, come, hear, remember, and recommit yourselves to the good, holy, and necessary ministry of the church. Come to this table where the wounded victor has fulfilled all of God's promises. Come and be reconciled with God. Be reunited with creation and rejoice with one another. Amen. Hear now these holy words of invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Whatever separates you from God, from creation, or from one another, name it now. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. 
Glory to God. Amen. This would normally be the time in our in-person worship service when we would share signs of peace and reconciliation with one another. And we've been doing that through sign language back and forth. Become calm. That's peace. So we say, peace be with you and also with you. Will you please join me in the great thanksgiving? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Most High. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He commissioned us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth, to make disciples of all nations, and today his family in all the world is joining at his holy table. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, us gathered at home, and us gathered around the world. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout the world and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen.
And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Christ has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ, broken so that we might be made whole. The blood of Christ, shed so that we might be reconciled with our Creator, with creation, and with one another. Come, let's eat together. receive this benediction. Depart now in the grace, peace, and fellowship of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, going forth as one people, united by Christ to serve and minister to the entire world called to love one another, to tell people about Jesus, to teach them to do the things that Jesus did, and to invite them into a community of faith, give them a sense of belonging and remind them that God is with them. Amen. Oh.